How you doing, man? It was, it's I'm, really nice to you. good, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, wow, that was a good solid 20 minutes right there. Oh, my God. That's, that's man, I do apologize. Technology, right? It works great no, when it works. <laughs> totally, totally understand. Totally understand. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad you got some water. That's mm -hmm. a good one. Yeah. Um, good. Thank you for joining me, dude. I really do appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I really. No, it's 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 a platform is 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 for the people. It really is. It's 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 for anyone who wants to get on it. That has yeah. a really good story. Um, and I think your story is phenomenal. You know, your background, in education. You know, um, your goals that you want to become. You know, uh, especially coming out of Kuwait as well, where you have, you know, very old school tradition with new school thinking such as yourself and wanting to bring those ideas and not going against tradition, but just bringing some new light into, hey, you know, let's move into the future. Let's move forward. Let's see how this can help us as well as a culture, as a people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um it's uh, it's definitely kind of like we said. It's not really going against culture, but it's it's definitely moving it forward. And 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 sometimes, especially in my culture, moving things forward can be extremely challenging, uh, especially because you're breaking the norm. So, for example, by when I mean by that, like um, when you know you grow up, especially because we're an oil-based country, so the job opportunities are kind of limited. Right. And what ends up happening is your parents will advise you to go certain directions. And uh, obviously, they're looking out for you, you know. They want your job security. They want the benefits. They want you to have a great life. Right. Um, but you cannot um, achieve greatness if you don't take risk and you don't get out of the bubble and move to a different area or have a very global mentality. And so I guess this is my, my challenge, um, but because I'm passionate about it, I look at it as a challenge and not an obstacle. I, I, think, I think you just hit a, a couple of key points, especially with the part of the world is, is getting smaller. We really are becoming yeah. more global. And you know, we're connecting at a time where we couldn't connect as, as easy as before, right? And um, I can see how the elders may feel how can we not lose our tradition, like I said, in our culture yeah. by being so global? How do we maintain, you know, our uniqueness, but still navigate through the future and accept what new technology or way of thinking may, may come with it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's, it's, um, and you know, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed to have supporting parents, you know, like I could have had, I could have had way worse parents, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, but my dad and my mom uh, and even like my sisters, like they've been very supportive uh, of me, you know, and I'm sure they, I'm sure deep, deep down, you know, they're like, oh man, I, I really hope he makes it, you know, like there's that mentality. But for me, I'm making it. I have to have that mindset because right. you can't, you cannot afford to doubt yourself in this, uh, whenever you're taking a step towards your dream goal, you know? So for me, it's not a, I hope I make it. It's more like I am making it. It's just how much time do I need to really make it bigger? Absolutely. You, yeah. Yeah, so you got to have the mindset that you're already there. You just Absolutely. have to figure out the road to get there. Absolutely. You know, so the, so the physical actions, the everyday grinding, you know, uh, taking chance and risk, right? And uh, going against the grain to where family and friends may scratch their heads a little bit. <laughs> they may not agree with your path or, or your way of doing it, but you know, hey, this is, this is it. Um, trust me, when I get to the end, you guys will be giving me a pat on the back and asking me how I did it. <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, the, the funny thing is because, so um, I'm a life coach and a business coach, so, and that's how I kind of brand myself uh, as a life and business coach, but also as a strategist. And the thing is, in my culture, um, a life coach is is it's borderline like a joke uh meaning it's like you don't know how to live your life go get a life coach he'll tell you how to live your life and that's so wrong it's a huge misconception right and so that's kind of how it's looked upon in society you know i mean i even go to like my uh, so we called 
we have social gatherings specifically for men, and we call that a duania. So a duania is a place where a lot of guys, you know, um, go to either like socialize, have fun. Uh, it's it's a man cave, is is what it is. Right. So the ultimate man cave. <laughs> and so whenever I go to uh, these duanias, you know, and like sometimes I get teased, like, oh, life coach, dude, guy, you know, like no, like yeah. <laughs> but but it's exactly. It's like you know what it's fine. If anything, I'm going to use that as fuel so that one day, whenever I am in that level, they can be like, Oh, we kind of missed out on an opportunity here, you know? So how do you feel about that? So, um, how do you connect that bridge to make people understand what life coaching is really about? It's not about you giving them advice, right? It's about really making the advice of taking their own advice and taking their own courage and displaying it and bringing it out. Is that correct? Absolutely. So um, I, I'm definitely trying to create more awareness uh, on the matter. So I do that in the form of contents, uh, videos, um, definitely trying to like as many people as I meet, I'm trying to like educate them on just the concept of the difference between coaching as training and coaching as guidance of some sorts. Right. And so, um, coaching is there are two meanings for coaching the first meaning is the standard oh let me train you or let me yeah. assist you and tell you what to do and then there's coaching in the form of guidance which is really what a life coach does uh and which is more of empowering the person to find their own answers to unlock the obstacles that are in their minds because we all have them absolutely um, and they range from the smallest to the biggest of things. No, absolutely. I, I totally agree. I think, um, you know, it's, it's different between a counselor and going to a therapist and then to a psychologist, yeah. right? They all have their little niche. They all have their little certifications of what they can and can't do. Um, and life coaching is, you know, it's, it's not nothing really new in America. We've had it for a little while, yeah. you know, so it's been for a while and it's been accepted and, pretty much almost everybody has a life coach now. Let me speak to my life coach. Let's see what happens, right? It's almost like a going thing to have. Um, but breaking against that concept um, and culture, because like, well, what does that really mean? How do I go by it? And you may have a lot of people undercover using you and saying, hey, I want nobody to really know, but they might be giving me the phone call and saying, hey, you know what? I need your help. What is this life coach thing really about? Can you help me? Don't tell no one. Do you find yourself in that kind of realm where it's kind of undercover? Um, it is, it is. I actually, um, ha have a client that was like, I am not going to work with you unless you, you like guarantee that, uh, you know, there's a, like a confidentiality. And I was like, it goes without saying, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, the practice, I mean, the, the ethics of, of a life coach are ex almost identical to that of a therapist. Right. Um, and, and where whatever happens in the sacred space that we create together as a client and a, and a coachee um, is that nothing leaves the circle that we create together. And no matter any kind of information, of course, with the exception of, you know, God forbid, if you want to hurt yourself or others, then that's a different story. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, privacy is very big here where in my region, um, I mean, to be honest, therapy in my region has just now slowly become more acceptable because there's all that, you know, oh, you're seeing a shrink, so you're crazy mentality going on. It's weird because in my culture as well, Puerto Rican and in the culture, it's, it's, it's looked upon as a negative thing. Like you said, like, oh, you must be crazy. Um, it's not looked upon as, you know, really trying to figure things out. You just needing assistance. And Sometimes the older generation tend to say, well, we had to do this. We just had to work through it. But then you also see that sometimes they had issues that they never got fixed. And they, had, and they just passed it on down the line to their children. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you start, <laughs> you have like uh, grandfathers and grandmothers passing down crazy things to yeah. their, to our parents. And, and especially the scary thing is the more we educate ourselves in a, from a psychological point of view, and then we start noticing the flaws in our parents' behaviors or our right. parents' uh, teachings to us. And then we're like, oh my God. And the thing is, you can't help but feel bad because they didn't have the resources that we have now. 
I mean, yeah. can you imagine how different you would have been raised if your parents had like access to Google 24 right. seven on any job in the world they wanted? It's a different ball game. So, you know, and that's why I have to be very appreciative of the, um, you know, just being raised with good parents because regardless, you know, I mean, I could have had way much worse of a situation going on here. So it's always great to count your blessings. And, uh, and you know what? You got to let things go and you just got to move forward, focus on yourself so that you can become a better parent one day and then educate the next generation. No, absolutely. I think that's, that's fantastic. I think you're absolutely right where the resources were limited for them um, to now, to your point, like, you know, anyone could Google anything and having a life coach develop from the, you know, from the new culture of, of the internet, the social media, and people really be more open-minded and understanding, hey, you know what, I want to be mind, body, and soul holistically. And you can't get that way without working on yourself. And, and that mental part, having that life coach is going to assist you with that as well, though, to break through those barriers, especially if you said in business. I can't tell you how many times I was going through my career where I was, I was confused. I was you know, mistaken or I was trying to compete where I didn't need to compete. And having that kind of business mentor kind of puts you back on path again. Absolutely. Um, I mean, uh, in all transparency, uh, I have, I work with two coaches. I have a coach that is more in my, uh, focused on my life aspect. And then I have another coach that's more focused on my business aspect. And, and that's how the top people in the world succeed. They have the best people around them. Absolutely. Um, you constantly, it's, it's ludicrous to even think that you can make it on your own. It's, that does not exist. That's just something people say, but in reality, that's all 100% false. No one makes it 100% on their own. It's always surrounded with a group of people, professionals in their areas of expertise. So you'll have, the, you'll have a mentor. I actually have a mentor aside from my coaches. So um, you'll have the mentor. You'll have the life coach. You'll even have maybe a therapist. You'll have um, counselors maybe, uh, or you have uh, consultants uh, that will come into the picture to, to help right. build someone up. And, and I'm, I'm constantly preaching that, you know what, especially for this kind of profession, yes, maybe therapy is a bit too, it's a bigger deal, but life coaching, um, I would probably say is essential to everyone. And the reason is, um, so if, you've never, if you haven't figured out who you are, that's a big deal. Right. You need to find your purpose in life and move forward and, and start building things. Now, if you've, if you've managed to um, discover who you are, then you need a coach because now it's about attaining these goals. And what's going to happen is in order to attain the goal, you need to have small wins to get to the goal. And that's where the obstacles start rising. Uh, the obstacles of internal obstacles, as well as external obstacles, the ones that you cannot control, but it's all about how you respond to them. And, and that's why, people who know themselves still need a, a coach of some sorts to help them overcome these obstacles along the way. Yeah, you're right. I think it's pretty much like having a, a true fan or cheerleader on your side and family and friends can be probably the worst at it because they don't understand what you're trying to go through. Um, they may get a little jealous because of your endeavors trying to go move forward, right? It may be some envious thing, stuff happening in there and they want to support you, but they don't know how. And to your point, like you have that goal, you have that top of the summit that you want to get to, but those steps is crucial. Those small wins are crucial to you going forward and understanding, hey, I can do this. And having that life coach is going to be saying, hey, you know what? You got this. You can do this. Let's reevaluate your goal setting. Look at your path where you failed, where you succeeded. Let's wash, runs, repeat on your success part again. Yeah. Actually, I like the point that you mentioned where – um, it's like, you know, having the family around you and I got to tell you, man, it's, um, sometimes family could be the worst people, uh, to, to be supporters. And, and the problem is they either it's, they're doing it unintentionally and God, I, God forbid if it's, just, it's intentionally and what's ha and that comes in the form of kind of like what you said, I don't know how to support them. So I'm going to critique them. Right. thinking that's going to benefit benefit them and guess what the critique comes in a more aggressive tone 
instead of, so don't do this, don't do that, you know, it's too negative. Um, and sometimes family members could be your mom and dad, could be your sister or your brother. Absolutely. And that's the hardest because, especially if it's your mom and dad, we're all, we, we, we all want to please our parents. We all want to make them proud. So imagine if your mom or your dad are the ones that are, um, let's say, polluting that mentality of, of, for, for you to grow. Uh, and it's worse if they're doing it unintentionally. No, yeah, you're right. I, I think a lot of the times with parents, they have kind of gotten stuck in time, right? Yeah. Where they possibly probably couldn't do their dreams. Everyone has dreams or passions. And they fell into the, the rut of, let me just get a job. Let me just support the family. Let me just survive. Sure. Where I think the new generation, our generation, it's all about living. How do we live better? How do we enjoy life? Like we, 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 we are very much more aware of our time on this planet. And we want to spend more time doing the things we want to do. So to so the older generation is like, well, I didn't have the opportunity. I had to work for 30, 40 years just to put you know, food on the table and close you in the bag. And now you're telling me that you want to do this life coaching thing? Are you kidding me? It's so true, man. It's, it's, it is what it is, but it's so true. Like, uh, yeah, it becomes definitely challenging, you know? Um, but if you got the right support system, yeah. um, it becomes so much easier. You know, when you're, when you have the, 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 the right uh, cheerleaders, let's say, um, supporting you and cheering you on, um, actually that's when you'll notice who are your true friends and who are your true supporters is when you take something, when you take a major step like that, when you risk it to that level, that's when you start filtering the people that you, that should be in your life and the people that shouldn't be in your life. Um, as hard as that may be, may be to some. How do we um, get to the point to where we separate life coach from kind of the therapy connection and have it kind of solely on its own? How do we make that happen? Beautiful question. So um, the way uh, we view, uh, the, the way coaches view therapy is that therapy, you go back to your origins and, and that's where really the, the core values and, and the, the main trauma or the main problems arose in the past. And then we clean that up so that you can move forward. Right. Whereas coaching, it's moving forward. Um, and we only go back. Uh, now, keep in mind, we don't go back too deep. Um, and the moment we feel we're entering therapy area, that's where we raise our hand and like, okay, what kind of support have you had around this issue? Um, have you seen a therapist? Have you had counseling of some sorts? So as coaches, we are, we have to be very aware. And, and the thing is, you'll, you'll, you'll know it. You'll know when you are borderline, uh, between coaching and between, uh, okay, this is definitely, there are either mental in issues or illnesses, uh, or major past trauma that they'd experience. So that's when you have to draw the line and that's where ethics come into play. Um, and you ask them, what kind of support have you had? Okay. On this issue, we, I, ca I cannot, as a coach, help you move forward because that's a major psychological issue and you need the right professional to help you with that area. However, what I can help you with is based from that line onwards, that's where I can help you with. Now, if that entire topic is still too difficult, then we have to change the goal. I cannot coach you on something that there is a lot of psychological blockage. Uh, therefore, you won't be coachable. So we have to leave it as it is. And we have to focus on a different goal that doesn't have that psychological um, baggage. So uh, it's a sensitive line. No, it really is. And I think, you know, it's really like brought up is like, you know, coaching is about being in the now. Being, Absolutely. And being in the moment. And, and to your point, not really trying to, fix anything from the past is about hey i'm at a certain point in my life i need some assistance even if it's just encouragement like we were talking about earlier from my outside source and how what do you feel right now especially for 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 women around the world right um they're wanting more they're doing more um how do you navigate through that culturally as well? When you have some, some women are suppressed, some women aren't, different cultures. Um, you want to be a global brand, of course, yourself. 
Um, how do you how are you going to decide how to work through that to see to make this especially in different regions, right? How do you make yourself more available? And does it stop you from trying to make yourself available because you know that that region may not want that or receive it as well? Um, so in that aspect, um, given the fact that we have the internet, so you're everywhere and anywhere. So that caters to that. And when you target your audience, you'll be surprised from where they come. Um, when you approach certain people and you tell them, this is what I do, and this is how I can move, make you move forward and achieve your goals, um, it almost automatically breaks any kind of uh, social norm. Because you know, at the end of the day, people want, they have goals in life. And if they find someone that can help them achieve that goal, they're definitely gonna wanna at least get intrigued by, by the idea. Now, um, you raised a very good point about, you know, like, especially like women in my society, you know, it's very, it's a very conservative uh, society. So, but you'll be shocked to learn that there's so many women who have incredible ambition, um, but definitely they have the, um, what I call the, the external uh, obstacles where it could be the, the, the friends, the family, um, it could be like a religion uh, comes into play, it could be even right. politics comes into play sometimes. So really it comes the choices that are theirs to make um as a coach i cannot tell them what to do i can only empower them to make the decisions that they are comfortable making so i will probably have clients that will probably sacrifice their goals because of their social values or presence and 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 you know again i don't want to say pleasing the family but more like respecting the family and the traditions and, and the way of life um but I definitely try to empower people to achieve their goals. That's my, my main goal as, as, a, as a coach. Right. Um, these things, I try not to uh, interfere with my work because, again, they're more client-specific. But for me personally, um, I cannot afford to think that way, especially if I want to achieve my dreams. You know? and, and I have to admit, it is much easier on, a, on an Arab guy to go out and about and do that kind of stuff you know there is that unfortunately that kind of mentality for for the guy uh whereas it's not available for 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 the woman so so whenever whenever i'm working with my female clients i definitely try to empower them um, especially when i see a lot of potential it's so hard for you to ignore amazing potential you can't you will be doing them a disservice absolutely you're right what made you get into it. What was that kind of that turning point for you? It was like, I want to be a life coach. Like I want to be like a business coach. Like what, what made that turning point for you? Yeah. So I think I was a coach a long, long time ago, my friend. I, I've had so many friends come up to me and be like, uh, Abdullah, I have a problem. I need your help or I need your advice or something like that. Right. And, and it started in the form of advice initially. And apparently I was giving great advice except I was never giving it to myself for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it goes. Um, but um, so yeah, after, you know, of course, uh, I've, always, I've always had a passion to helping others. I was always a giver. It was, it came naturally to me and I loved doing it and I loved the satisfaction to see someone happy because of it. And I actually was uh, going to go the route of, you know, continuing my master's and then pursuing my PhD because as a professor, you're giving knowledge, hence giving. So it was in alignment with that value of mine. And, um, and so I did my master's. Uh, and then before um, taking that next step to becoming or entering like the PhD world, um, I kind of took a, a break from that because I wanted to pursue just some of the applications application side of, of work, etc. In that time, I managed to be, you know, become a trainer as well, because that's also very much in alignment of giving back. Um, and coaching came into play when I actually, I was, at the time, I was in a relationship, and that relationship was suffering. And I wanted to give it I never, I didn't want to leave without having tried my, my all and my best to make it work. And so the next thing, you know, I'm watching like Tony Robbins videos and <laughs> watching all kinds of inspirational leaders and strategists and coaches, you name it. I was seeing it, you know, um, from all aspects, from life, relationships, etc. 
hoping to uh, fix the problem, but the issue is it was unfixable. And um, so after that relationship ended, um, I was like, oh my God, I, I don't care about the relationship anymore. I just like the, the amount of work and effort and research that went in the last couple of months um, really resonated to me in a subconscious level and then just manifest itself in the conscious level like a few weeks later. And I was like, man, I, this is what I really want to do. Like everything I heard, and especially because I'm a huge um, Tony Robbins fan. So like whenever he was speaking, I was like, man, I wish I could do that. And then it hit me. And that's when it hit me. You know, I was like, you can do that, you know? <laughs> so that was the mentality where it switched. It's like, yeah, I can do that, you know? Um, and, and next thing you know, I was jumping online, researching all kinds of uh, coaching schools and institutes. And I started booking and I, and next thing you know, <laughs> six months later, I'm a certified life coach and I'm, you know, getting clients and it, it's, I'm living the dream. I am making it happen. That's an awesome story. I love that. And that's, and that's what sometimes it takes, right? Sometimes it takes a little kind of trauma to Definitely. jump into something. And, you know, when you said about your relationship, most likely you was trying to just fix it for her, but you wasn't even really looking, reflecting at yourself to say, hey, what am I doing wrong with relationship piece? And I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins as well. I think he's just, he's just this massive piece of energy um, that is so fluid. It just touches you in so many ways. I think with life coaching, it does help form discipline because motivation is temporary motivation is like a shot of adrenaline Absolutely. and it's the beginning stage of your journey like anything you do in your life after three weeks of something you kind of forget about it and you stop and you know three weeks ago you were just a gun ho and you really want to go after it yeah. but people tend to forget about that discipline aspect of it and doing the same thing over and over again even though it doesn't get you the result so quickly but you have to kind of stay true to that path, knowing that I'm going to keep on grinding, even when I don't want to, to get to that goal. That's where a lot of people do quit in between that motivational piece and their first maybe three steps of getting to their goal. Absolutely. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Like that, that shot of m motivation that it, it's, it's, it is a shot, you know, like it doesn't last too long, but you can train yourself to make it last long or you can train yourself to give yourself that injection shot whenever you require it and, and that comes purely when you know deep down what you're meant to do deep down what really is the core of your existence you know um or the, the reason why you want to achieve this goal is because you want to not feel a certain way because sometimes um we want to do certain things because we, we want to make them make us feel a certain way. So we action based off of emotion. Um, and, and, and that's where you need that shot of motivation, you know, and you, you have to get it from the right people, you know, uh, for example, Tony's incredible because not only does he have a, an aspect of knowledge, but he also has energy. Uh, right. The amount of energy that he projects is uh, very empowering and it makes you believe in yourself and that's the power when you have that kind of knowledge and you have the right energy levels. And I'm also deep into the energy levels as well, you know, because I guess as a coach, um, they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely full circle. I did, yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think um, understanding so much energy um, yeah. and how it projects from off of you or your own energy into them, I think is huge because every person is going to be different, you know, depending how that person comes to you, how damaged they are, you know, how motivated or uh, how skittish they are about even using a life coach until you really convince them, you know, to understand, hey, this is what I can help you with, assist you with, not do for you, but this is what I can, you know, put you on to. It's an amazing thing when you have that person, that mentor. And a life coach is pretty much that as well. It's, like, it's like that, again, that, that, that person in your ear, you know, letting you know, hey, you're on the right trajectory. You go on the right path, you know, let's switch it up a little bit. What do you think? And force that person to really use what's inside of them already that they've had, but you, you're showing them how to use it now. We all have that in us. 
We just don't know how to make it come out. And I think that's where the life coach really comes into play to get that person to be the true 100% of themselves. We tend to think of ourselves as we're busting our ass and we're doing 100%, mm. but we really haven't pushed ourselves 100%. We're probably at 50 or 60 thinking we're, we're, we're at 100. And when you push yourself even more, yeah. you're like, oh, you know, I had more in the tank. I know, wow. So I really wasn't at 100. You know, I was at maybe 40. I think that's where the life coach really comes in and helps that person. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the, the great thing that you just mentioned is that, um, was that coaching, it's actually very similar to, to therapy in, in, in another way, which is um, there's like a saying where the best therapist is the one that resides in you. Yeah. Um, and coaching goes exactly the same way as the best coach is the one that's in you. So I have definitely had sessions with myself, coaching myself um, on how to think differently. And, and that's extremely, that's, a, that's definitely the next step. Like you, you want your clients to reach a level where like in, in case of emergency, coach yourself. That's kind of a thing, you know? So, and, and, and I can train people to do that, but they need to reach a certain level of understanding of themselves in order to do that, because you got to get really comfortable with yourself. Yes. Like you got to be very hard on yourself. Like when you know you're slacking off, you got to face it and you're like okay you are really slacking off and 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 sometimes i coach myself really aggressively like i go all the way it's like okay Adela, get your ass off of bed you know like like you got to stop this lazy behavior you got to stop victimizing yourself you got to stop procrastinating you know like all these things so you got to be very tough on yourself and a lot of people maybe find that a bit difficult to do because they want to face themselves correct um again internal obstacles there's reasons for everything we do and and that's where um, um, a coach comes into play, you know. And another thing, as coaches, we actually do have the ability to um, give our professional opinion on a specific field that of our expertise, but only only after we've exhausted all the options to get the answers from the client themselves, and only after we take their permission. Uh, so, for example, if the client is not able to figure it out for themselves, and I've tried all the ways I can, I would take their permission. It's like, would you mind if I make a suggestion? And only based on their approval, then I can share my actual opinions and maybe even um, try to flesh it out a bit just so that makes sure. it clear. No, I think that's fantastic. I think um, what I do for my, myself personally, you're talking about you know, self-coaching, I, I've had to do that myself. I had to really... Uh, hold myself accountable uh, to my ideas and to my dreams. And what I started doing was I started writing down every day, journaling what I did and didn't do. And by the end of the month, I took inventory and counted how many days I took action wow. and how many days I did nothing. And that was, that was really eye-opening eye because mentally I thought I was killing it. <laughs> but then when I looked at my calendar and I saw, man, you did 21 days of nothing <laughs> and you did about seven days of something. I was like, that does not equate. Like, I was like, wow. And I was like, man, you really are, you really do suck. <laughs> it's like, so it really put me into perspective of I'm not as grinding as I, I hard as I thought I was. Yeah. Uh, because I, I wrote down, okay, I got busy with this. I just, I just went to work and I didn't put no time into or effort into my, into my effort, my passion or my purpose. And I did nothing with that, but I did this, this, this for everything else. And when it came out to be, like I said, it was like 21 days of, of, of not me attacking my dream, yeah. talking about it, probably thinking of it, but no action whatsoever on it. And the results were what I deserved. I, there was nothing from it. I, I, at that point, you have a hobby, right? It, it's a yeah. thought. It's a dream. It's a hobby. And that's as far as it's going to go at that point without the proper action. Uh, I think you just nailed it. Like measuring, measuring is like literally that is one of the basics of coaching. Having the having the goals, the first step. The second step is measuring it. Yes. If you cannot measure it, you cannot uh, manage it. And if you can't manage it, you cannot achieve it. That's just the way it is. And if you exactly like the way you did it, if you cannot visualize 
or see it like real life and be like, okay, this is my goal. What specifically am I doing today that's going to get me one step closer to it? If there's nothing that's that specific and not timely, guess what? That goal, it might happen in the near future or in the distant future. But the problem is you could always get your goals much quicker if you are more disciplined on, on taking more steps to achieving them versus kind of like what you said, where, you know, you looked at the end of the month and you're like, whoa, 20 days, 21 days, I did nothing and only seven days and I feel like I was making it? No. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if you spent every single day in that month it could be something as simple as five to 10 minutes, just making you one step closer. Absolutely. By the end of the month, you'd yes. have accomplished so much. Yes. So measurement. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think, uh, you know, I think a lot of people tend to really do goals or vision boards are the next big thing as well, right? You have your vision board, you, you know, you do cutouts and you paste what you think you want to do, what you feel for the year or next five years. Mm -hmm. People really get stuck on, the steps of the goal. They get so caught up on the big vision or the big idea, but then it's like, okay, well, where do I start? Where's the middle? And I think that's where the drop off really happens. That's where the discouragement really happens. That's when the family comes into play and say, I told you so, yeah. right? Um, again, not keeping yourself accountable and, and, that, and that measuring and keep, and tracking what you're doing. And a lot of times it just, just gets, the easiest thing is just to get started. Just Thank get started. You. And things will figure itself out. When I started this podcast, I didn't know how I was doing. But I was like, you know what? And I was just talking to myself at that point before I got guests. So <laughs> that got boring kind of quick. <laughs> and um, it was like, hey, well, you got to get guests. How am I going to get guests? I just started DMing people that I was following. And for a little while, I was interested in them. I was like, no, I'm just going to talk to people I have interest in. And I just want to have fun doing it. The expectation is having fun. I think that's another thing too. I think we tend to put so much expectation on ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, like you said earlier, you know, you want to please your parents. You want to kind of please your family. Um, and maybe you're the type of person, maybe you, you, you was the first one to go to university. And, you know, you kind of that, that, that golden child everyone's looking to. And there's a lot of pressure with that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, if you need a therapy, like you said, let's, unravel those let's unwrap that baggage first mm -hmm. so then you can really accomplish your goals and then from there get a business coach life coach yeah. to, to help you in the end game to be your best you in whatever area that you're going to be in yeah. and that's what people need to really understand i think as well like i said my goal is to really help folks understand like you know the separation of life coach and therapy totally that's two separate things let's get them separated for some odd reason, people think, I'm not sure where the, the connection piece they're, they're having with it, um, but we need to really uh, kind of drive a wedge into it and say, no, this is totally something different. This is almost like a, a paid for mentor, <laughs> you know, because that's what you're really getting. Like, and even with mentors, mentors don't really tell you what to do. They constantly ask you questions about, well, what do you want to do? What do you think you should do? How do you want to attack it? And there's always a question back to you when you have a really good mentor, you know, and then someone you can actually um, speak to freely without, without judgment or pause, you know? Yeah. Um, you, yeah. You, you actually mentioned like uh, the differences between the therapist and a, and a coach in every coaching session, there has to be a goal there has to be a form of measurement for that goal in that session, as well as for later on. Right. But more importantly, there's, there has to be an action plan. And maybe that's what probably isn't always available uh, with a therapist. The action plan is vital because it is those baby steps that get you to the goal that you're hoping, you know, there is work to be done. There is homework to be done. Sometimes, you know, there are, there are worksheets that I, I need someone to fill out so they can see, um, a certain area that they want to focus in. Um, there are exercises, there are accountability calls. Like I love the aspect they were talking about accountability. Um, we, I provide my clients an accountability call. Like they, they get like, you know, uh, per month they get two calls. They can utilize them the way they see fit. You know, if they feel like whatever action 
uh, they don't need someone to be accountable because it's something simple, then it's fine. But there are, there are definitely those um, actions where, okay, this might be overwhelming. So maybe I definitely need a pep talk or maybe I definitely need someone to check in with me. And that's when they utilize that call and be like, hey, Abdullah, um, so I'm on track. I'm progressing great. Um, this is what I've done. Now, let's say, for example, something doesn't go according to plan and they fail to go through their, uh, the, the action that we, we agreed on. Uh, <clears throat> my question then becomes, what got in the way? I'm not going to, as a coach, you cannot be like, so why didn't you do it? Or well, you could have done it better. No, again, my role is to provide you the ultimate support system. And, and then, so when I pick up the phone and I contact you, and let's say you, you fail to, to go through with your action, uh, what got in the way? Uh, how did that make you feel? Like, is this everything okay with you? You know, like I want to check up. I want to make sure, okay, how can we make that step, take that step forward? Let me, right. let me help you in any way. I, let me serve you in any way I can. Yeah, I think this, this is the greatest thing about living in the time that we're living now because of the support that we can have, that we choose to have. Um, you know, we're talking about, you know, our parents and the lack of resources that they had. And for them, they may think this generation is softer, right? Um, that's, that's the biggest thing that the last generation talks about, this generation. Oh, you guys are soft. You need all this extra stuff. Yeah, you and say, well, imagine if you had the resources. You know, imagine if you had all this extra stuff and, and people really ch behind you wanting to, for everyone to prosper. You know, there's been so many wars and everything preventing people from prospering. Education has always been a, a huge thing that people would take away because they know knowledge is power. Yeah. And having that life coach is giving you that knowledge, is giving you that extra additional power to, to have to be an entrepreneur. And, and I think people need to understand too, a life coach doesn't mean that um, you just try to be an entrepreneur, right? And an, an entrepreneur... I think that word has been really used a lot. It's kind of almost diluted when everyone's not an entrepreneur. But on Instagram, everybody says they're an entrepreneur. <laughs> and um, it's, you know, it's, something. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, you can be a, just fine as a career driven, yeah. you know, being a worker, be as well, and understanding how can I be the best me in this area, in this field. And that's okay too. I think that's what life coaches also help out with that, um, making them understand. Your decision to go a career path outside of having being a business owner or an owner, owner operator, it's fine. It's so it's okay. Let's just make you the best you. Let's make sure you're a subject matter expert in what you're doing, so you could garner the, the right pay that you want and also be happy and in, in your life. Absolutely, and, and I like the fact that you mentioned like the business side of things um, as a business coach as well. Um, the areas that, that I help in are more catered to, um, again, it is also very goal driven, uh, but there's also like something that is much more powerful, uh, uh, which is high performance, uh, coaching. And, and, and that's where it is utilizing your maximum energy, your power, your intellect, all those areas and really taking it up a notch uh, and dialing it up to 11, uh, you know? Yeah. So it's, it will definitely, um, you know, like you're right. Entrepreneurs has been like crazy everywhere you go. Like, oh, entrepreneur this, and he's an entrepreneur and she's an entrepreneur. But the reality is the entrepreneur lifestyle, the entrepreneur mentality is very intense and not everyone can make the cut, you know? Mm -hmm. And not everyone was meant to make the cut, you know? Um, and, and some people are just different kinds of entrepreneurs, but that doesn't mean they cannot benefit from coaching as well. You know, just because you're, you're starting off uh, maybe a bit slower or maybe a bit, you know, behind than a lot of people. It's, it's not about how, sometimes it's not about how quickly you get there. It's, you know, sometimes it's about the journey, you know what I mean? Exactly. So to each person is going to be very different. Um, if you're starting a, a business, probably the most hardest thing is the decision to to say i want to start a business that alone is so overwhelming to a lot of starting you know like all entrepreneurs that are just making that first step it's so overwhelming and 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 that's where like a, a coach can really help make it more clear and more smoother and calm down relax we got this 
And, and you know what, let's tackle it one step at a time to just create the business and then one step at a time to create that, um, this department or that department or this action and that action. The next thing you know, a year has gone by and you've started your business, you've got some clients, you started you know, creating and generating income, and then you feel like a successful entrepreneur. You may not be the best, but you're at least an entrepreneur and you got started. And, and, as, um, and just one last thing to add in that aspect is like, um, it becomes a, a constant battle, balance between work and life, or life and work, whichever way you wanna have it. And, and, and that's where people feel like they have to sacrifice one for another. Um, and, and especially that, that entrepreneur mentality. Um, and I'm a huge Gary V fan, a fan. So, so am I. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the guy. Um, and, and, and he's a, he's a hardcore entrepreneur, you know, but, uh, and he constantly preaches that, Hey, it's not about just work, 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 work. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta balance it out. You know, um, you gotta give time for your friends and family. Cause that's just so important. You have no idea. That's time you will never get back. Exactly. And be very disciplined when it comes to your business so finding that balance is so crucial because a lot of uh, new entrepreneurs they cannot find that balance they think it's purely let's let me work i need to do this they start neglecting the the things that actually impact them on an emotional spiritual level and it affects their performance by default so no yeah i i think you're totally right on that. i think the, the the miss the perception people have is 50 50 though about balance and that's not accurate balance isn't 50 50 um balance is whatever you decide to make it out to right so if you are gonna you know let's say like a gary v you know the weekends is for him and his family phone is off or whatever yeah. Monday to friday he's grinding to 16 Definitely. 18 hour days possibly and you have to set yourself up to understand that i'm the same way too i'm off on sundays and mondays i work tuesday to saturday but I, I squeeze in the podcast after the podcast is done. I'm shutting everything down. I don't edit until Monday evening for Wednesday post. <laughs> so, yeah. but the rest of the day I'm spending with my family. I have to, yeah. I want to have that, that time. I want to be away to shut down social media. I don't post nothing. It's just not even thinking about it. I'll post when I, on Tuesday, Tuesday morning or whatever. Yeah. And it, it's not 50, 50. I'm working five days a week on your family or two days a week. So there's no way you can equate 50, 50. And, but you have to find someone that's willing to understand that on top of you have to be honest with yourself too. And understand yeah. that that 50, 50 mindset does not really truly exist. It could be 70, 30 and you could be the happiest person on the planet yeah. because that 30% could mean so much more. Cause you're on purpose about it. Um, so it turns out to almost be like the 50. Absolutely. I think that's where a lot of people make that mistake, that cognition with, the whole yeah. half and half. They, they, they try so hard at doing that that they actually fail at it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really not about the time. It's the quality of time Correct. Uh, you're spending. You're right. Like you can have a 10-minute conversation with your, your parents and that can give you the energy equivalent to a full day at work. Um, you could, and that's really kind of like what you're saying is, is, is that, when you're spending that time with your family, it's not the time, it's really the quality of the time. Like, every, like one minute with family is equivalent to maybe 10 minutes at work. Yeah. Uh, and maybe that's, that might be up or down. It depends on all on the person and themselves. Yeah. No, absolutely. I think that's, that's, that's crucial for people to understand. I think that's where life coaches come into play, though. To yeah. have, give people those, those analogies and give them those understanding of how to best use their time. Um, for them to understand their makeup of their day, right? And, and, and how they need to go forward for their week. And, and don't get me wrong, you know, you want to be spontaneous too. You don't want to always just have a freaking plan. You want to be able to squeeze something in if something comes up. You just want to be this person. No, I can't, I can't fit in my, 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 my planner. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to do it to make that, that energy come forward even more when you're spontaneous a little bit. And I think that people are so used to not being themselves. And we talked about this earlier about, you know, finding yourself that they're so used to having a representative. They're so used to presenting someone different because that's yeah. what they think other people are looking at them as. Instead of truly just finding themselves and being themselves, we find that to be very difficult. Yeah. And, and that's where, you know, life coaches are in play and therapists have a different sector in that as well because 
we just have to be us. You know, we got to be understanding that you are okay just being you. Like that's yeah. that's all everybody really wants. You know. Um, in the beginning, you mentioned something really important, which is the uh, the importance of time. Mm-hmm. Um, I constantly tell people, um, like any any time I see someone taking a time management class or a course or something like that, I'm like, that is probably the most important course ever, because it's time is the one currency you never get back, Correct. and if you're not yourself today you're just wasting your existence on nothing. And, and it's like, instead of you know, finding return on investment, how about trying to find return on time, which yeah. you can never get, you know? So it's, how can I invest in myself today to figure out who I am, what I am, what do I, wanna, what do I wanna offer back to the world? And how can I go about it now? versus waiting it off for another day or you know what i'll start tomorrow so you got to capitalize on time and that's where the a life coach comes in terms of accountability and action and let's do this why are you not doing this let's do it now why are you going to wait you know so it's about achieving your goals as quickly and efficiently and effectively as possible so you can you can live that life that you wanted that you dreamed that you're constantly dreaming it's like okay i want to do this i want to do that well you got to start and you got to start now and you're gonna measure yourself then yeah. you got to take the right actions and then you got to evaluate and and face the facts you know whenever you're you know okay yeah i kind of messed up here i kind of really need to up my game or maybe you know what i think i'm upping my game too much i need to chill and just spend some time with the family so Absolutely. You get, you have to check the data, right? Like you have to, and that's what I do. When I was, when I started recording my days, it gave me data to look back on, you know, cause I thought I was doing my thing and I really fucking wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <Right? Yeah. laughs> so give me an example of, of a, of a client without being you know, super uh, into it, but if you could provide some type of detail that was your most challenging in business or on a personal side. So, okay, that's a good question. Okay, so there is this client, and um, she is a very successful businesswoman, and uh, and she has a big support system. Uh, she she has a therapist, she has um, a stylist, she has she has so many people around her, which is amazing. You don't find people like that. So right. I definitely value her like very very dearly. And as a coach, you always work with people that you just love on a personal level and vice versa. Uh, and that's how the, 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 the coaching relationship is built on, on that kind of chemistry. So the difficulty that she faced was she had so many goals that she wanted to achieve and it was overwhelming to her and to myself at times um, because I think she just expected so much of herself, you know, um, and she wanted to achieve everything now. She wanted to get the results now. And that's great, but that's not the way things work. That's not the way our minds are meant to work. Um, you can only achieve so much, but at the same time, it, it's like this, uh, that concept where, you know, if you, if you try to hit everything, you'll be average on everything. Right. Uh, so you got to just, sometimes you just got to slow down, you know. And I definitely recall one of our sessions, going, like it started with one goal. 10 minutes later, it changed to another goal. 20 minutes later, it changed to a third goal. And that's when, you know, like you you can kind of like feel the frustration uh, um, on her side, you know, like, oh my God, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know where I want to (laughs) start. But see, as a coach, sometimes you got to let them figure that out for themselves. You got to let them know that, you know what? You see, you got to take it slow because you want to do this. You want to do that. You want to do that. You got to take it slow. And you got to focus on just one goal at a time because you got to create a pattern of success. If you don't have a pattern, if you don't have a, a kind of like a track record uh, of accomplishments, then you, there's nothing to build on. And so you got to start, start preferably with the thing that really matters to you the most, prioritize it. And then you got to start slowly. And it's okay if it takes longer than you expect. And that's the problem with expectations. You can never be happy if you have expectations so i always advise people 
have no expectations mm-hmm. and you'll be fully happy. <laughs> I totally agree with that. I get, when I started this podcast, as I said, my expectations are zero. It was yeah. just to just have fun with it, talk to interesting people. Yeah. That's really it. You know, for some reason, we've, we've always, as, as humans, just kind of set these bars at weird places that we can never get to. And you don't want to put a bar that's super low. But we tend to put the bar so freaking high. Um, and like you said, she was just oh, so overwhelmed. She was everything now. And yeah. it takes time. Yeah, you know, to, just, to deconstruct the building or, or to knock it down takes minutes. minutes. But to build it, man, it takes time. It takes all these people. Like, it takes less people to destroy something to, than it is to build something. Yeah. And that's what people understand. When you're building yourself and, and your, your personal wealth, yeah. it's an amazing journey, like you said. And sometimes the journey is better than the actual goal because once you get to the summit, now you're looking and saying, oh, this is beautiful, but I've done it. It's done. Um, yeah. It wasn't as much as I thought it would be. So I had a, I had a goal. I'll share the story with you real quick. I had yeah. a goal trying to get a, a, a BMW, right? Awesome. And I always loved BMW. I said, man, I want to get one. It looks so badass when I get it. Why well, I'm getting one, right? Worked so hard to get him. I'm signing the paperwork at a dealership and everything. Man, first two weeks, oh man, I'm driving around. I'm stunting. I thought I was such a badass. You know, and after like, you know, a few more weeks later, I was okay, well, it's a car now. I gotta put gas in it. It still has wheels. Um, of course it's a status symbol, but I was like, okay, well, what am I doing here now? It was fun. I drove it. I kept it for my, just about a year. I kept it, and I got rid of it. I traded it for a Hyundai. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it was it was. I was so much more in love with the fact that I was trying to get it. Okay. And I and I got it. To when I received it, it was like, what well, is not as cracked up as I thought it was going to be. You know, yeah. the whole song and dance and the, and the spotlight on that vehicle that I wanted. And how I seen I seen how someone else was driving it. I said, "Oh man, what is, what is that going to do to me and my image?" It did absolutely yes. nothing. It just yes. made me more broke, right? So, <laughs> yeah. But I learned so much that that journey because it, it really showed me that you know what? It wasn't my first time completing a goal. A completing a goal it was really my first time really enjoying the journey to get mm. there. And, and, and accepting the journey and the challenges that came with it. And, and then it also forced me to rework on the steps I need to take to get to that goal. And that's when I understood how goals actually worked. It was like, oh, okay, well, the goal is just the summit. It's the top of the mountain. I got to climb this, this damn thing. Mm-hmm. I'm going to slip. Some rocks may fall from beneath me. I do have my safety harness, which is great. I'm going to keep that on. I'm going to keep on, you know, going up. I might have to take a break here and there. And that's what I think people don't understand as well, is that when you have your goals, there's going to be so many different emotions, so many actions you may have to take. You may have to step back some. You may have to reevaluate, you know, build a new path. You may have to say, you know what, I'm going to run through it instead and challenge myself, and this is something i got to get better at. And as every goal now that I've set, I'm kind of looking forward to those challenges to really force myself to, to gain more knowledge about me and my strength or the lack thereof to move forward. Yeah. That, that's such a realistic situation where, you know, you, you, you have the vision that, you know what, one day I'm going to have this. And then when you get it, you're like, Oh, huh, interesting. I thought I would feel differently about it. Yeah. Uh, or I thought like it's going to look a certain way or, you know, and that's just because you were already projecting yourself in a certain image and you outgrew your older image. Yeah. You were already progressing and you just, you know, at the time it was, you didn't realize it, but like probably by the time you purchased the car and then like a week later and you know, you're like, yeah, you're still like, you know, mesmerized by, by, by the car itself. But like, your image at the time, you surpassed the, the BM. You are worthy. You you view yourself very differently. You're way above a BMW, uh, and and so therefore, it feels like whoa, this is not me anymore. You know, like, <laughs> and that's the beautiful thing. It's chasing your 
chase, and I constantly tell people like this, I tell them, stop um, looking at yourself in the now. Try to project yourself where you want to be in five, 10 years. Preferably Absolutely. the longer, the better. Yeah. Because when you, and when you live in that mentality, you will manifest it in the real world. Um, when you are already that successful businessman or successful businesswoman or that um, wh whoever it is that you want to be, whatever the, sex, the definition of success to you is, if you live that in your mind now, you will manifest it in the way you walk and the way you talk and the way you dress, everything, everything will change. And guess what? People will take notice of that because that's, kind of, that's the kind of energy that no one can ignore. It will be yeah. very, like, whenever you walk in, people will notice, okay, this guy knows something that I don't. <laughs> and that guy really knows himself, really, is what it comes down to. And, and then next thing you know, whenever, whatever you project will manifest itself in, in the real world. It's kind of like, the, you know, the law of attraction kind of a thing. So <laughs> you'll start attracting your goals to yourself, you know, and, and that's where the, the, the true power comes in. Whenever you get the goal, uh, then you get to evaluate, is there, is there really what you wanted? And if it is, then great, then let's go on to the next goal. And if it's not, then that means you outgrew that goal. And, and that's even better news because that means whatever next goal is bigger than the one that you previously had. Exactly. I love, no, I love that, that you're absolutely right about that. What is, what is your next steps? What is, what is your goals for you right now? Wow. So definitely um, because I've, uh, I started everything like towards the beginning of the year, so the beginning of 2019, and I am just in a constant uh, mindset where building myself, building my brand, building awareness, uh, because at the end of the day, it really comes down to my core value of giving. Right. And, um, and I kind of shared, with this, uh, shared uh, this with you uh, a bit earlier. Um, my, you know, given my love to, to Tony Robbins, I've always uh, envisioned myself uh, being someone like him and kind of like going back to some of our earlier uh, stories where I was saying that, you know, it's like, why can't I be like him? I can be, you know? And so in our region, we don't have a Tony Robbins, you know? And mm -hmm. I want to be the Tony Robbins of my region, except I want to be Abdullah Murad and not That's Tony awesome. Robbins. I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, like, so my path right now is not just building myself as a coach because Tony is not just a coach. Uh, he, he definitely set the trend for coaches, but he's also a, an incredible facilitator. Um, he's also a strategist. He's also a, a consultant uh, and a trainer. So he's so many things wrapped up into one. And that's what I'm trying to do. And, and they all go hand in hand. So I definitely have... Uh, I definitely want to try to uh, get a lot of um, opportunities to speak on stage. Uh, definitely want to get more opportunities to to train. I am already a certified trainer, so I'm, I'm already on the right path. I just need to get more opportunities and build myself in that aspect. So, and I'm already coaching, and I'm already in in some form of fashion consulting as well. So, I am living that mindset, and it's important because I'm living ten years in the future. I'm not living right now, and I'm constantly projecting myself. You know, and I even I actually had a conversation with my mentor a few days ago. And she was telling me that um, you got to, she was basically telling me, because I was telling her, like, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, I want to do that. I said, like, okay, you got to take it slow, you know? And, and, and I was like, okay, you're probably right. I need to take it slow, but I can't at the same time because I'm, I'm there, yeah. you know? But again, you don't want to drift too far away, but it's good to have an anchor is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes I you absolutely have, have an anchor. Is huge. It really kind of, um, like you said, it levels you out. It really puts things in perspective again. It keeps, it keeps you out of the clouds. <laughs> you know, if you get too much in the clouds, then that's where trouble comes in sometimes. Absolutely. I love that. I think, I think you have it. I think you got the chops for it. I think um, that would be fantastic. You know, I'm, I'm going to support you. You know, that, I think that would be amazing. I think you should definitely start some conferences. But just by inviting your, your current, you know, and also former clients. And say, hey, bring, bring, bring a person with you, yeah. you know, that you may think may need some coaching. So I can just introduce myself and, and introduce them to coaching and what that looks like and have them do some testimonies and how it worked for them. And that way you can bring the awareness you're looking for. 
you know, and they, and they can have that face to face engagement. Social media is great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. As it got me to you, which is amazing, which I love. Yeah. Sure. But social media also prevents people from engaging in this type of way if they're not look, sorting that out. And a lot of times they want the information, but they also close the curtains on themselves. Mm-hmm. And I think that personal touch should definitely be there still. You know, coming out of your home, putting your phone in your pocket, and truly yeah. just looking someone in the eyes and talking to them and getting that feeling. You can't get to a device. You know, you can't feel a person's energy or um their sarcasm or their realness you know yeah. um it, it it does something to you when you get to be around a group of successful people yeah and there may be two or three levels above you but it's like man they're still attainable i can they're not too far off i can definitely get there you know and and there's plenty of group of people like that together and as i think i think you're you are going to be the tony robbins of your region i think it's gonna be fantastic and I, I see that new generation looking for what you're giving, you know, yeah. uh, whether they know it or not, or they're afraid, you're going to get a lot of undercover clients, you know, again, using you. And your goal is to make it, hey, we don't need to be undercover. There's nothing to be ashamed about, Absolutely. you know, and it can, you have to mess with the pride because, you know, your coach is very prideful, is strong, you know, and that's great. But again, that's from the older generation. You yeah. get to be prideful and strong and be vulnerable at the same time. I think vulnerability is also mistaken as well, right? So when you're, when you're vulnerable, it's not showing your weakness. It's allowing yourself to say, hey, you know what? This is who I am. I, this is my, my flesh. I'm not going to cover it up no more. Um, and people confuse that vulnerability piece as weakness, like I said. I think you have to really look at it differently and see how much more stronger you are when you, when you actually can say, hey, I'm going to be vulnerable in this moment and yeah. just be super honest and go on an, an, an attack on my passion and purpose, you know? That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, no, that, that definitely makes sense. And um, f- to add to that is that, um, you know, uh, I, definitely, I definitely have these moments where uh, I'm running into people and they don't realize that I'm coaching them, which is right. the best. <laughs> but, that, but, that, but that's, again, you know, like, it's, it's not like it's... Um, because there's not a lot of awareness, so they don't really understand what's going on. But again, it's not like I'm doing anything that is, um, you know, that is like maybe I'm overstepping my boundaries. No, I'm, I'm basically just asking powerful questions. That's all that I'm doing. And um, you can definitely see that aha moments happen right in front of you sometimes. And it's so good when it happens because that's when they've unlocked something. And and I, I definitely remember this very vividly. Like I, I remember one day I was, um, I was at work and um, someone passed by and she, she, was, she happened to be a student uh, at a university and she's, I think she was a senior and she was on her last year hoping to graduate and she was a graphic design major. And uh, she was looking to meet one of my friends who is a graphic design major and she was looking for his advice. So unfortunately he wasn't there, but I was passing by. So I told her, Hey, can I help you? And she was telling me, Oh no, I want, you know, I just wanted some advice on uh, graphic design because I'm a student major. I'm just okay. It's okay. Tell me what's up. You know, I mean, <laughs> I, I, we've all, I've been to university, so let me help you. <laughs> all right. And then she started telling me, he's like, um, I'm in my last year and I completely hate my major. And I only entered this just so that, you know, I can please my parents. But now I've found a passion for something completely different and I have no idea what to do. I don't know what, you know, what if I try to do this and if I fail and, you know, I just started coaching her on the spot, you know, and I was like, first of all, she was very, you know, intense and like she was afraid that she was not going to make it. But then, you know, after like 15 minutes of conversating with her, telling her, you know what, it's all right. You figured out what you want now better than 10 years from now. Can you imagine if if you figured out what you wanted to do and you were miserable for God knows how many years, it would have been way worse. And, and when she, and and this is, here's another thing that, that, that is really important. And I hope your, your viewers really listen to this point, which is um, she had a situation where um, she was only looking at one opportunity Mm-hmm. And I told her, why are you looking at that jet, only that specific opportunity? 
She said, well, because it caters to the, the, my goal. I was like, okay, but what is your goal? And she's like, well, I want to try to help people. Well, it's like, okay, so you can help people in many ways. So why are you limiting and boxing yourself to just that opportunity? What if that opportunity fails? What then? Are you going to feel lost? See, so it's like putting your eggs in one basket kind of a situation. So, and that's something that I also discovered within myself, you know, when I was going back to my story where I wanted to become a PhD and I wanted to give back on, a, on an academic level. I was like, wait a minute, I can give back in multiple levels. I can give back as a coach, as a trainer, as a consultant, as a professor. I can give back as a so many things. And, and, and that's where, you know what? When you figured out what your core message, your purpose is, you cannot box yourself in because it was, it's going to be so big and you can do so many things with it. So, You're actually right. I think a lot of people are, are confused because they hear information from other folks or out there and, and or even their, their own Instagram feed or Facebook feed from their friends about how you can only do one thing and don't do more than one thing. And, but at the same time, if you do more than one thing, you need to become a subject matter expert in it as well. Absolutely. It, you just can't half-ass it. Just don't do it to do it and you only know but so much that you cap yourself. You need to really go after it and be yeah. very knowledgeable in many different things. Like the average millionaire has several different revenue streams for a reason. And they're not all the same, yeah. right? So it's the same thing with knowledge. You can have a, a multitude of, of knowledge streams coming to you where you could be um, maybe not a forefront, an authority of it, but you damn well near close to it. <laughs> and yeah, no, absolutely. You got to be an authority on, on yeah. whatever it is you want to give back to the world. Absolutely. And then from there, you can, you can exercise that knowledge into something else um, to where it can open up even more doors for you. That's what people need to understand. Like, that knowledge is, has so much value and not to cap yourself in certain areas. Um, so let me ask you a question. If you were to coach me, mm -hmm. what kind of coaching style would you coach Johnny Nomad? How would you coach me? Well, see, as, as coaches, we kind of, we have to be, of, of course, authentic with ourselves, but also, um, Whatever my, the way I work personally, whatever my client gives me, I give back. So okay. I am a reflection of you from, from, from a, uh, a body language, from a verbal language communication. So whatever you throw at me, I'm going to throw right back at you. You're going to be of, cursing a lot. <laughs> hey, I enjoy it. <laughs> you know, but, but like, it is what it is, you know, like, like I see, because as, as, as a coach, I have to make sure that my client is at all times comfortable sharing whatever it is they're sharing. And that means setting the, uh, the sacred space is what we call it as coaches. So the sacred space is, well, sacred. <laughs> so therefore, um, whatever happens in that bubble needs to be in that bubble, but also it needs to allow the client to feel their true selves, the selves that they can't even show to their parents. That's how deep it needs to be. Gotcha. And, and if I am too stiff with you, uh, or if I'm too, um, just like, you know, you're cussing, but I'm not cussing, it's going to turn you off subconsciously. Even if you're not trying to control it, it will. So whatever you throw at me, I'm going to be your opposite mirror, but then I'm going to coach you on whatever is the goal that you want. So that's, that's really how I approach it. So whenever I have a client, I, I, I honestly, I definitely uh, analyze their body language. I analyze um, the way they communicate, how they communicate. Are they visual, audio, kinesthetic right. uh, learners? Um, all these things, they help create the, the, the profile uh, for myself so that I know how to engage with the client more effectively. I love that. What do you do to keep your energy even? You're dealing with so many different people. Right, you have oh. different types of clients. They're 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 feeding you their energy, and mm -hmm. you're there. You know, you're human. You're gonna absorb that. Absolutely. Um, what do you do? I guess, in in course of of taking care of them, of help assisting them, and after you're done with them, do you do some type of kind of woo for yourself before you take another client, if we, like, or maybe you're taking on several different clients? How do you navigate through your own energy? and your own personal emotions to give that person the best you possible? That's an excellent question. Um, so 
between sessions, I definitely try to give myself at least a 15, maximum 30 minute break uh, in case I definitely need it for that kind of a situation. So definitely you'll have those days where your client is just projecting so much negative energy that uh, I'm giving them the, the positive, but I'm taking the negative in. And um, so th the way that I deal with it is, first of all, the location that I'm in affects because if I'm in my, let's say in my, in my home and that already is an advantage because I'm already he healing because I'm in my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Um, but if I am, let, let's say in, in a place that is not really, I don't consider it my comfort zone, then it'll probably take me longer. Um, another thing that I do is, uh, because I'm a musician, so, uh, I play the guitar and the guitar for me, like playing music and singing is the ultimate form of from negative to positive it is the ultimate filtration system for myself um so and i can and i just need maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes tops to get the job done uh so that's another form um i'll be honest i'm not like meditation never really resonated to me however Same here I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just one of those things. Even though I'm into energies and into a lot of things, yeah. but it just never resonated for me. However, <clears throat> my my faith was because we pray five times a day. So in order to um, to pray, you, you you have to be in a, in almost a meditation um, state. And so that alone, I, I look at that as my meditation. So whenever I'm praying five times a day, that is where I'm getting my my form of energy. That discipline of you know connecting with God and, and making sure that I'm in alignment with myself. Um, but I've, I'm very blessed that I've never had that situation where the negativity was so much that I had to cancel a meeting or something like that. Uh, but, um, but yeah, it, it's such a realistic question. And that 15 to 30 minutes definitely um, makes the difference. Now, I'm assuming in the future, like let's say if I'm sorry, getting more clients, I will still try my best to maintain that 15 minute window in case I actually need it. Because like you said, I'm someone that gets affected by energy levels, just like a lot of people, whether they like to admit it or not. Right. But, um, you know, uh, there are days where you just need, you need a break and it's, it's totally normal. We're all human at the end. No, absolutely. I just, uh, when I'm doing my, my, you know, talking to people like yourself or anybody else, depending what the story is and, and how heavy it can be, you do receive a part of that. You do become a part of that energy and it does stick to you. Absolutely. And it can definitely affect you in a certain way. Um, and like to your point, finding outlets to kind of get through it and remove it the fastest way possible. Yeah. So it won't stick to you. is huge uh, to moving forward. And I think that's where a lot of people need assistance in as well as is realizing that type of energy to get access like, from family members and friends, yeah. you know, not realizing the energy that they're absorbing from that and that's their, their emotional basket case because of it right and they Absolutely. have no other outlet they don't know how to get rid of it and remove it from them man this has been a dope conversation dude i love it <laughs> <laughs> yeah man, I'm, really, I'm really enjoying it um, what's going on in your head <laughs> yeah man this is just like um for me it's like this is an amazing thing because i think when i discovered life coaching yeah and i really understood what, what people were offering I was like, this is, this is the, the coolest freaking thing. Cause it's just so different from the outside. Like I said, from therapy piece, yeah. but then when I, uh, you know, I have you on, I had Lena on as well. Yeah. Uh, Lena, Lena is, she's amazing. Um, and we spoke about, you know, life coaching and again, the, you know, the regional thing of, of the game, the understanding, mm -hmm. the, the acceptance, um, you know, not looking like a gimmick, or, you know, you're just trying to take advantage of folks type of thing. Um, and the culture is, is, is strong. The, the people are influenced because, because the American peace there as well. So you have that connection, hence the yeah. American university of Kuwait. <laughs> right, so, um, but again, it to me, it's a whole generational thing. I think you have so much leverage right now for yourself because of the time you were born right now, yeah. it yeah. couldn't be any more perfect. Like the, the, the stars are aligned. Like the only way something can stop you, if you decide right now, just to stop. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're right. Uh, and 
And see, um, I, I, I'm very, I'm someone that's very authentic to myself. So um, w when the social media trends start kicking up a notch and people be start becoming influencers left and right, people with no message were being famous. People, you know how like you say, don't make stupid people famous. Well, there are a lot of stupid people, unfortunately, who are extremely famous. Um, and I didn't want to be one of those. I didn't want to follow that trend. And I didn't want to have an account and start creating a following if I didn't know what my message was, exactly. you know, because especially if you want to, if you really want to become someone well-known, there's only two ways. You either, you either entertain or you educate. And I would, I was definitely not the, I, I'm definitely, you know, with my friends and family, I'm definitely an entertainer, but right. my, my core message is education. I want to give back. And so I felt that is more weightage, has more weightage. And, and so yeah, it took me a bit of time to come to the realization of this is what I wanted to do. But kind of like what you said, I'm already ahead of the game because a lot of people are not doing this. A lot of people haven't figured this out. A lot of people in my market are not well known for this profession. Or, and so I already, I'm already ahead of the game in that sense. So mm -hmm. I need to just capitalize on that and, and, and see it through all the way and even take it up a, another notch and just see where my, my potential is. And that's, that's something that I've always um, questioned about myself. It's like, okay, where is my ceiling? And I want to know where my limits are. And I definitely want to break through that ceiling and, and just and see where I can take myself as well. No, absolutely. And, I, I totally agree with that. I think um, that I think when, you know, when I did this podcast, that was my biggest thing about education. I love education. I love learning stuff. And the best way to learn is from other people. You know, absolutely. And, and talking to every person I've spoken to so far this year, I've learned so much. And I'm talking to people all over the world. And I'm, I'm, and that's my goal is this is not for me. This platform is for everyone. And I want to get everyone's story out there, whether it's a, a hardening story or uh, someone who's taking a profession to a region that's just non-existent really and unsure and like, you know what, I'm going to go full-fledged ahead with it anyway. Um, so just fun conversations about yeah. the world and where we at and what's going to happen next. And having that, those conversations, showing people that we have a lot more in common than oh, what yeah. we think that we do is a huge thing for me. Yeah. We, we all are human. And because of where we decided to grow up, what was birthed at, there may be some, some cultural differences. But I want to say differences. I would say there's really unique pieces to your culture that make you who you are and, and, and talking to you, talking to Lena, um, talking to my, 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 my guy, Tommy, he's in Colorado. I have another guy, Tommy, he's in, in Bali right now. I just saw he's on Ecuador right now. He's traveling like crazy. I, I you know, I had a uh, Arizona slim. He's an underground hip hop artist. And last wow. episode, um, just speaking to so many different people and learning from everyone. It's really filling my tank. Yeah. It's, giving, it's passing on to me my knowledge. Like the journey I'm on right now with this podcast, my goal, I'm not sure what I want to do with it. I would it actually, because I'm just enjoying it. Like we said, no expectations. Hmm. Um, I'm just having fun with it. You know, it's gaining traction and I'm, I'm making the best business decisions possible based off of it. Um, but talking to you and getting up, I only have four hours sleep. Got home at four o'clock in the morning from work and I got up at eight o'clock in the morning and oh. I make sure I got the set ready so I could talk to you and make sure everything was, was, was good. And that's what people have to understand. That's what they have to do. If you're really going to be motivated about what you want to do, you have to form that discipline no matter what and understand you are going to sacrifice some sleep. Like you said, like Gary V says, like, you know, he's worked 16, 18 hour days yeah. and his schedule is tight. So he tells you I have 15 minutes for you. You better have a really good elevator pitch for 15 minutes. You better get everything out real quick. And you have to respect that. Um, yeah. And you want to, again, like you we said earlier, find that balance. Achieve that goal of having that balance in your life to where you're doing something that you love, but then again, you're not choosing, like the woman yeah. you were speak, you're speaking true. to, but she was like in her last, she, her last year, her major, I don't want to do this. You know, I did it for my parents. I want to just do, I want to go skydiving. That's what I want to do all damn day. 
go do it. Figure out how to monetize it. And I think people also, too, confuse passion, purpose with money and being rich. And like you said, the famous thing. Yeah. They need to remove that and just say, what makes me happy? My ultimate goal, I'm going to tell you right now, my ultimate goal is to be on the beach with a little tiki hut. I'm a bartender. I'm just chilling, having <laughs> fun, just talking to people. And that's really it. That's what I want. When I retire, so-called retire, that's exactly what I want. You know, having that to me is, that's, I'm rich. So listen, as long as I can live a nice life that I want to live, be able to travel the way I want to travel. I don't need a big home. Obviously, I don't need a fancy car no more. I discovered that. Right? <laughs> but yeah. I had to go through that to figure out yeah. myself. And then my goal was to change after that. I, I actually threw away my, my first list of goals. I threw it all away once I got rid of the car and I reevaluated myself. I took true inventory of myself. I said, you know what? Your goals are trash. I was Bravo. like, I have to reinvent myself to the person that I know I am, but my true being. I was going after the position and the money. Mm-hmm. That's what I was going after. No, 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 the title. I'm climbing the, the corporate ladder. I'm going boom, 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 boom. And, you know, as we talk about the you know, business coach as well. And I had to stop myself. I, I became consumed and became this self-competition thing. And it was like, well, am I actually any really good? Obviously, I'm getting a promotion. So, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the job. I'm getting it done. But it wasn't fulfilling. I yeah. kept on going after the next one. And that was kind of my title belt. And... Once I got in there, I was kind of just bored, twirling my thumbs at that point. I, the challenge wasn't there anymore. The challenge was just trying to get the promotion and the money. Yeah. When I threw away my, my goals and reevaluated them and rewrit them, it was huge. It was game changing. Um, it really enlightened me in how the first half of my life, it was like, man, you were really career minded. Your career kind of controlled your life. And you lost some of it as well because of it. I think that's where you come into play, helping people really understand that, so they can make it so they can make that decision sooner than later. Um, just incredible things that you were just saying right now, and uh, and I love the bit where you talk about you know how people can monetize or capitalize on the things that they're passionate about. You see, when you the hu- humans, you know. When, when you remove culture, when you remove religion, when you remove all these uh, things that really, at the end of the day, are very personal opinions, um, we have a lot of commonalities uh, for, as, as humans. And, and the, drive, the, the main things that drive us are also the same. So when you realize who you are and what drives you and what motivates you and what is the thing you want to give back, and usually the things that we want to give back are almost very similar, you know? We're, humans, it's in their nature to care for others because we, we also want uh, other people around us. You know, we're not meant to be on our own like this, you know? So we, we constantly need people around us. And giving comes in multiple ways. There's so many ways you, you can give. And, and it's almost always a form of giving. Right. And when you realize that, and when you actually become more specific and understand what exactly you want to give back, you can always monetize it because there's always someone who wants to receive it in return. And there's, and there's also always that, that balance for every, you know, uh, one side, there's another side for every left, there's a right for every giver, there's a receiver. And it's just tapping into your giver and figuring out who wants to receive whatever it is you want to offer. And that's how you capitalize because that's something that comes naturally to you. The reason you were saying that, you know, you just want to be in a place where you're just socializing with people is because deep down, that's your core value. You know, like that runs deep in you, you know, hence the, the podcast. That's one way you can monetize anything that gets you to communicate with other people and help them communicate with others. That's probably something that really drives you. So imagine you, I'm, I'm assuming like if you, if you take away the concept of the podcast, if you take away the things that you want to do and you really dig deep down, you realize what you really love doing is connecting with people. And then you'll start to see so many opportunities where you can connect with people. You'll find opportunities where it's pro bono. And then you'll find opportunities where, you know what, I can actually capitalize on this. And that's where 
that's where the business side comes in, you know, and that's how you can capitalize and actually love what you do. And, and see, because you love what you do, you don't mind, you don't mind working 12 hour shifts or, or, or even more, or you don't mind sleeping only four hours because when you wake up, you are so eager to do what it is you, you love. So you couldn't care less. If anything, if it was up to you, you would probably forget sleep and just get to work 27. I would have quit you after work. Man, let's get this started. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, no, you're right. And it's just on September, middle of September coming up, September 22nd, yeah. I actually was invited to a conference to talk about podcasting. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's monetized. I'm getting, you know, some, some funds off of it. So nice. people can buy your tickets. It's um, uh, lovingme2019.eventbrite.com. Use yeah. special code JNP Charlotte. And you get 50% off tickets. Anyway, <laughs> so um, James Plug. <laughs> but, you, but to your point, because yeah, I put the energy out there. I, I reevaluated the podcast from last year to getting guests. Within six months, I got a speaking gig. What I would, and, and it came from one of the guests, which is fantastic. Because making those connections, again, and that's what the people need to understand. Like we need to really just surround ourselves with the best people possible. The competition thing, you don't need to compete. You know, there's enough for everyone in this world. And um, I have to really blame America for that. We're always about competition, competition, compete, compete, compete. Mm. Um, you don't need to. What you need to is compete against yourself. Yeah. You know, you are your own competition. You are your own deterrer of anything that you do. Yeah. Um, and once you figure that out and you, and you gain this cadence, yeah. Of, of 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 self esteem and and courage and, and power, um, it's intoxicating, yeah. and you want to continue having that some more, and you go after it, and you go after it again, and and you you look back and say, man, I didn't know I can do that. The, the trail just blazed, wow, and you become so full of yourself, not in a bad way, but just in a way of, yeah. man, I, I I found something. It fills me like to your point, me just talking to people, I, I can I love to discover new things. I love to discover how people think and not trash the way people think, but really try to understand like, wow, what made you think that way? Or is it the way you grew up, your background? Is it just because you read a bunch of other shit <laughs> and it changed your way of thinking, your experiences compared to mine? Yeah. But at the end of the day, I should still be able to share something with you. And we should still be able to kind of just have that tug of war without it being violent or just an argument and saying, Hey, we disagree, but let's go get a drink or get some food. Let's go break some bread together. Let's enjoy the rest of the night. And that's, and then call it quits. And that's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and um, it's definitely challenging yourself, competing with yourself, with your best version. You want to constantly um, be like, am I, Am I being the best version of myself? Am I actually, like, if you have too many hours that you're feeling are not productive, then you need to reflect back on who it is you are and what drives you. Because believe it or not, the moment you know what drives you, you are going to say there are not enough hours in the day for me to do it, what it is. You know, like, you'll your mind will change. It will flip. Um, like, and I'm sure you probably experienced yeah. the same feeling because I can see the nodding. <laughs> it's so real, man. It's very real. Like, like there are days where I wake up and I'm like, man, I, can, I just, I just want to take a day off work so I can just focus on myself, you know, like, and, and because that's, there's, that's, I have so many hours throughout the day, but it's still not enough. Yes. Um, and then I have to sleep and some, and I love sleeping, but there are days where I wish I could just like, go on a crazy, you know, binging instead of a series, binging myself, you know, studying Absolutely. myself, studying my business and growing. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's another thing is, um, you know, if you really want to change the world, you got to collaborate. You got to take things to the next level, you know, instead Correct. of competing, which is great. Competition breeds excellence and breeds uh, innovation and breeds a lot of it things. Does. It does. Collab Collaboration is what really transforms the world. You know, when you have the yes. biggest and the best collaborating, they're going to breed something insane. So, yeah. so let me know next time you have a conference. If it's in Kuwait, I would try to figure out how to get there. 
and I would, I would support you. I would, I would go out there and I would support you. Yeah, man, um, really Lena has already invited me anyway, so I would say I had to go because of Lena. Okay, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, man. Like everybody I speak to, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, and I continue to keep in touch with them. And, I, and at least once a month, I just check up on them. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? What do you need me to do for you? Do you need to come back on a platform? What do you need to discuss? And think of this as, as your podcast, man. This is yours. At man. any given time, you feel like that you really need to disclose something. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't even have to be about life coaching or business coaching. I get you. Just, just whatever. If you feel like you're, it, you're dead hardened to speak about it, hit me up and say, hey, I got something. I got to get off my chest. And we'll just put you on and you do your thing, man. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate that, man. That's that's, yeah, man. that's very uh, humbling, honestly. So thank thank you so much for, for that opportunity and and the platform as well to do that. No, of course. Like I said, this platform is, is not mine; it belongs to the people, and I'm just the um the host for today. And when in the future, I want someone to take it over, and continue the platform ongoing, to make sure that the people are heard. You know, that people can communicate and listen, and uh, really focus on being the best human they could freaking be. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I appreciate you so much. I, I, I thank you so much for coming on. No, man, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me and uh, definitely more conversations to come. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, dude. So um, you're going to have a good one. I can't, I can't wait to see what else you do. I'm watching. And so is everybody I'll, else. I'll definitely, I'll definitely keep you posted. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right, everybody. This is Giant Nomad Presents. Thank you again, Abdullah. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. All right. All right, man. Take care.